and the tragedies that are accompanying it. And then I zoom in on uh, Team BC as it gets prepared for the Indigenous Games going to Toronto. And some of those young athletes are from those communities that are on alert right now. So we just have our thoughts and prayers for those young athletes and their families. And uh, so with that, I just wanted to acknowledge that piece there. And we're here, of course, to talk about wellness and health and how food and sustenance becomes critical to our existence. And, uh, and so once again, I've had the honor and privilege of traveling with uh, a group of workers here through the, the province in the past year. And there again, I ask myself, oh, are we going to be able to do that this year in a, in a good and safe way, uh, recognizing that some of the communities that we may have wanted to enter uh, have some questions right now. So in that note, I just want to offer a prayer and uh, thank our Creator for today and bringing us to this point. And thank the Creator for the afternoon and offering us sustenance. And I want to acknowledge the Creator for loving and caring and teaching us to respect all of creation. And uh, special prayers go up to all those communities that are in dire need of uh, help and um, and trust that the Creator will look after all the people and the communities and children as the fires subside. And um, but we also know that the Creator has a way of um, working with us to learn from what we're experiencing. And uh, ask the Creator to be with us as we gather our personal strength, wisdom, and guidance to help us this afternoon. And uh, thank those presenters and uh, technology for making this happen. And uh, so with that, I just wanted to acknowledge everybody that's online right now. Thank you for who you are and what you do. And bless you all. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alex. Hi, everyone. It's always an interesting um, experience doing webinar. I miss your smiling faces. Uh, but... Uh, Thank you for grounding us and trying to just connect to all our family and friends all over BC and and uh, I know I have a few friends that are on evacuation alert and just sending my heart and thoughts out to them. So good afternoon everyone. I so wish I could see your faces. It's such an interesting technology. Um, my name's Fiona and um, I want to thank Jesse um, for inviting me um, to come in here today and uh, uh, share and uh, learn from you. Um, my name is Fiona again. I'm first generation Canadian from Irish ancestry. I have occupied the Lekwungen lands for the last 20 years. And oh, I just got a lovely kiss from Alex. What a great way to start my day. Have a great trip to Nag. Everyone's getting excited here for the uh, Indigenous Games. So maybe some of you are going. I'm very jealous to see all those amazing athletes. Um, as I was saying, I have uh, grew up and spent most of my time in what is commonly known as the Saskatoon area or the Cowichan area. Um, and just want to acknowledge uh, my place as a visitor, an occupier, and a settler in these lands. And of course, acknowledging the beautiful island and uh, the uh, Kwakwakiwak, the New Chalmath, and the Coast Salish people and the lands that um, uh, have their land and uh, all the knowledge and the food that uh, comes from those people. Yeah, and I always want to just start by acknowledging the community members that were kind enough to share their food knowledge with me and uh, the teachings. And uh, I always laugh because I was a vegetarian when I started this work 15 years ago and think about all the beautiful food that I now eat and how the community helped uh, open my eyes to such um, a vast amount of beautiful food. And this is a visual of that, um, Vancouver Island and the food system. Um, and I like this, uh, these drawings to just ground us in food and our beautiful uh, food sources. And I know that lots of you are not from the island and uh, you're all over BC. And I know that we have the fires and we have some stuff going on that's really affecting uh, ecosystems and harvesting sites so just like thinking about that and sending our prayers and good medicine out to that but I do like to use this visual 
um, to remind us about the bounty and the beauty that is around us, especially here where, where I live. So summer uh, is here, and uh, I love this time of year. I hope many of you have uh, activities and adventures and quiet time planned with your families and friends and the people you love. I grabbed some photos of things um, that kind of reminded me of summer when I was a kid. So the middle one kills me. It's the slide that you can throw in your yard. And I remember one of my favorite things is when my dad just put a massive thing of plastic in the yard, threw some dish soap in the hose, and I think we splayed on it for a week. But just the fun time of summer and just the different activities and uh, kind of not the structure that we're so used to um, keeping up with in the, in the busy school time. So uh, hope that you guys uh, can ground yourself and think about some fun summer activities uh, for you and your family. So I was going to focus a little bit today on eating together and then having some fun um, in the summer with the different foods that we have, the bounty that we have. But one thing that's really uh, come out in the research in the last five years, and some of you probably know a lot about this, but just eating together. Um, studies show that eating a snack or a meal together at least once a day has huge benefits to you and your family and especially young people. And <coughs> sometimes the word family meals can bring up like the Sunday dinner, uh, the big kind of feast, big dinner, but really, family meals can happen at any time. A child <coughs> and at least one adult eat together. And so it doesn't have to be what I think of when I think family meals is when all my family gets together and we sit around the table for hours. Really, it could be a quick breakfast, um, a snack, but it is just sitting down uh, at a table or in a picnic and having some food together. Uh, what we know is family meals um, really do um, help promote um, health in children. And what the research is showing is kids do better in school, they have better social and language skills, they're more connected to their families and friends, they have a better understanding of family values and traditions, are less likely to smoke, use drug or alcohol, they are more likely to have a healthy weight, they're less likely to be bullied, they have less risk of depression and suicide, and they can feel more stable, secure, with a greater sense of belonging. So here we are cooking at the tribal school with um, some young people, and we're just trying to model that idea of sitting down at the table. And they were kind enough to share a little bit about some of the barriers that they see to connecting uh, with their families. And of course, time, and people are busy, but sometimes the TV's on, or the phones are at the table, which I can be bad at as well, um, or distractions sporting commitment, but just trying to talk to the young people about how to connect with their families uh, through um, one meal a day. So eating together for the families, it's just a time to connect, uh, building strong family ties. Um, what we know, it also increases fruit and vegetable intake and more nutrient-rich foods. Um, eat fewer fried foods, chips and pop, enjoy a greater variety of food. You also save money when we actually eat together in the house um, and you can just create those connections and those traditions. And um, that was kind of what I was gonna think about brainstorming and it's so hard to do. I wish I could uh, talk to you guys and hear from you but you can always type in something you wanna share with us and Jesse and I can chat with you at the end about it. But food memories and relationships and. I always think about my mom, when she sets the table for any dinner, she always wants a potato. And she'll talk about how she's cooked it and how she connects with it. And I swear it's um, that connection to her dad, who is a potato farmer, who was a potato farmer in Ireland. And when she eats it, she's like, oh, don't you think it just tastes just like my dad's spuds? And so we have those memories or those connections. And so is it canning with your grandma, berry picking with your siblings? Having an ice cream cake for every birthday. Is it um, your summer Mary Mary's? Is it full of hunting, fishing, or making fry bread? Is it um, cooking your favorite food or your, your child's favorite food for their birthday? 
or is it those barbecues in the park or is it a family hike or a soccer game what are some of your favorite summer activities that create that you kind of seem to do each year and they become those traditions um, that we love so much so this whole uh, presentation kind of came from shaking up the summer and I love barbecue season I love the smell when you walk by someone's house and you can smell the grill I love the taste of my first corn on the cob in the summer um, or just when someone's maybe sauteed onions and they can put them on your burger or you can put them on a smoky and then of course watermelon I just love uh, eating up watermelon in the summer but there is some common foods that we um, eat in the summer and I kind of just made a quick menu of hot dogs, hamburgers, potato, salad, wings, pasta salad, chips, fizzy drinks, ice cream, corn, watermelon, freezies, slurpees, salmon and more. So there's lots of foods that we connect with. Um, so I, what I came up with is a kind of a common barbecue plate. Hopefully I've tried to capture what some of you think is common. So one hot dog with ketchup, mustard, and relish, a corn on the cob, a cup of potato salad, a cup of ripple chips with some dip, an ice cream sandwich, a piece of watermelon, six wings or ribs, and uh, a pop or something fizzy to drink. And so Ro uh, Robin, uh, Jesse had asked me to kind of deconstruct that a little bit and how does that add up? So that's what we did here in this uh, next uh, page so what's that nutritional breakdown so in the black column here what do we have is kind of an average day what we should get from all the food we eat throughout the day so men and women are different um, activity levels but so anywhere between 1800 to 2200 calories for an adult uh, fat you want no more than 9 to 15 teaspoons throughout everything you eat throughout the day carbohydrates no more than 28 to 35 teaspoons and then sodium I always use in those little salt packages that you can get and so you want no more than six of those throughout the day so that dinner that we just looked at here this is how it starts to break down if you ate that all at a barbecue so it's 2348 calories it's 26 teaspoons of fat 58 teaspoons of carb or sugar as carbohydrate breaks down to sugar and sodium 18 packages so just it's amazing how things can add up I was actually just at a barbecue last night and having to consciously look at the table and try to figure out what are the best choices for me to have at that time so just a way to look at it and then we're going to kind of look at options to kind of shake up um, what you have if you're doing a picnic, a barbecue, or going camping. Some of the surprises I found though when I was, you know, doing the nutritional breakdown here, when I was kind of looking through it is, I was surprised with the potato salad that it was almost, in only one cup, it was almost 400 calories. And there was 1,300 milligrams of sodium in a prepackaged bought potato salad. Whoa. Or the wings, there was a thousand milligrams of sodium in just six little chicken wings. Um, also mayo, it just is amazing how it adds up. In one um, tablespoon, there's a, a hundred calories. Uh, pop is just amazing. That one little can of pop has the ten packages of sugar. So it's just basically for every ounce you're drinking a package of sugar. Uh, the dip, God, chips and dip. Um, potato chips are one of my biggest weaknesses so I'm glad I stay away from the dip but the dip yeah 400 milligrams of sodium and 300 almost 400 calories in uh, four tablespoons so it just adds up and then um, I was surprised with like adding doing the ketchup a tablespoon of the ketchup mustard and relish it had four, almost 450 milligrams of sodium just with like a teaspoon of the topping so just wanted to acknowledge these things that just sometimes you think are small when you're putting them on a burger or having just a few chicken wings or uh, thinking, hey, what's a great snack, chips and dip. So we're going to kind of walk through all of this and just come up with some other ideas. And of course, at the end, I would love to hear your solutions, your ideas, 
and some of your um, successes with uh, reinventing the picnic or the barbecue. So that's kind of what we're going to do. Um, we're going to talk about fluids first because it's a great way to start. I, many of you might have seen this. This is something I've shared at a few of the trainings. Um, again, medicine tea or making iced tea of any kind, um, you know, I have the recipe here on here for the fur tip sun tea or iced nettle mint tea or um, really there's not a lot in it. It's just full of the nutrients that the plants gift us um, and that your body doesn't need to walk for very long to burn something like that off. However, when you take that um, instead and have an iced cap, you need to walk for 48 minutes to burn something like that off. Um, or if you want a flavored latte, um, I should have probably put a Slurpee in here, but I think a Slurpee is about the same. It's 63 minutes of walking uh, to burn some of these drinks off. So let's rethink our drink here. Um, this is a beautiful mason jar just with some ice and some cucumber and lime and mint and strawberries. But you can use any uh, fruit that you might have, frozen fruit, uh, any herbs. Rosemary can be really nice. Uh, one of our friends uh, teaches us, and she actually puts a bit of chili in her water with a little bit of mint, which I haven't tried yet, which I need to try this summer. Uh, but yeah, so flavoring uh, your water with any small bits of fruit, um, just to add that beautiful flavor. Um, again, just drinking water. Um, or the medicine teas. Um, as you can see, and some of you, of course, have been to the trainings that have seen the stations where we're trying to show some healthy drink options. Um, so you can check the handout out there uh, with some more ideas and resources. And we're always looking for new ideas. So if you have something that you feel like the kids are loving or your community is loving, we'd love to hear um, and to spark our ideas, our ideas and interests. Um, this is, again, any kind of um, fur tip or evergreen uh, tree tip sun tea. We, of course, have a ton of fur in this territory. I was just hiking in a house territory, and, of course, it was spruce everywhere. And so kind of whatever. I know that there is some pine out there as well. So just using them and placing them in a mason jar with some water and letting the sun gift you the flavor. Um, so I really do enjoy this as a hydration, especially when we think about all the athletes heading off to NAG. Such a great uh, medicine for sports or when you're sweating and you're really hot. I liked this one. This one I found, um, superhealthykids.com. They have some great recipes and tools. Um, so some canned pineapple with a little bit of the juice some bubbly water or club soda with two cups of frozen berries and a cup of ice and just whiz that up in a blender and your kids getting the pineapple and they're getting the strawberries but they're having a fun drink and of course probably serving it um, in about a one cup glass at, at each this one looks a bit big probably 12 to 14 ounces instead of eight uh, but yeah anyways I thought that recipe was kind of fun and I tried my best to put some recipes throughout this presentation, but of course I couldn't fit them all. So I've left Kim, Kimberly Black and myself's email at the end. And so if you liked an idea or really want a recipe or needed some ideas for something or you're planning a community feast and would love a menu, you please just connect with us for sure. So then I'm gonna move on to the kind of barbecue when you think about some of the sides. So this is one of a common um, side that we have at barbecues and this is the ingredient list from uh, one of them that you could buy at Save on Foods. It was probably about four cups, maybe five cups of the salad and it cost $5.49 but this was the ingredient list for a macaroni salad and so what are some options instead because we know that uh, we've talked about mayo a little bit um, but we want to kind of try some different options. So I've thrown in here, we've got a whole grain veggie pasta salad, um, and the cost is $7.95, but I think it made about eight cups. Um, and then you have different options. It's got the apple cider vinegar, which we know is good medicine for you. It's got a teeny bit of olive oil or canola oil or whatever kind of oil you might have. And then it's got the fresh basil or the... Um, 
Italian seasoning, black pepper, and an herb shaker um, that we've shared with you all at the last training. Or you could just put a teeny bit of salt in there um, just to liven the flavors. So that's a, a nice pasta salad. But then there's a whole bunch of other options. So, um, of course, berry picking. I love just having mixed greens or spinach and throwing uh, blackberries or blueberries or raspberries or uh, salmon berries or thimble berries if you have any of those amazing uh, berries in your neck of the woods and just adding them on top of a bed of lettuce can be such a fun way to eat greens in the winter time or the summertime. Uh, and also I put quinoa here and the middle picture is wheat berries which I've been really enjoying this year they're very filling and provide a ton of uh, nutrition. Uh, so those are some great salad options uh, and I can send you any recipes you want if you want to uh, contact me on any of those and I'd love to hear if anyone has since wheat berries is something I'm just starting to cook myself. If there's your favorite recipe I'd love to hear it uh, or see it and then also um, if you have any tips about quinoa or wild rice salads or what are what is your favorite alternative to try and get um, different kinds of salads? However, I am Irish, like I mentioned, and I do like the potato. So this is my favorite summer uh, potato salad. So it's got um, using the Yukon, the yellow, or the or white or red potatoes, um, and you can use the small baby ones, or you can just cut the bigger ones up. Um, it has a bit of celery, green onion, and has the zest of a lemon. And it just adds such lightness. Um, and that has a bit of mustard. You can use just regular mustard, or if you have grainy mustard, it's quite nice. And a little bit of mayo and a bit of sugar to add a flavor. And then you can just add any vegetables you want to liven this up. But one of my favorite additions to a barbecue or a picnic. And then there's the chips and dip. So what are some alternatives to... Um, kind of just grabbing the bag of chips uh, and dip and heading to the beach. Uh, well, you know, many dietitians, health professionals always talk about hummus and fruit or veggie dips. So, of course, that's one of them that I've highlighted here. And if you, anyone has any um, hummus recipes they want to share or if anyone needs a recipe, we can always um, share it. I have a really simple one that all it is is a can of chickpeas. Uh, lemon, garlic, and olive oil, and so it just keeps it quite low cost, um, but quite delicious as well. And then, of course, you can dip crackers in there. Cucumbers can be really good as well. But one of my favorite things to do in the summer is the guacamole uh, black bean corn tomato uh, dip that you see on the top right-hand corner. And so I can send you that recipe as well where we've got fresh cut salsa and this recipe was quite sweet because it added a bit of um, strawberry into it which was nice. Um, using cucumber um, as a base for little mini pizzas or um, as a dip uh, can be nice instead of crackers so that can be also a really great option. I did put a, a, a recipe for guacamole uh, because sometimes we get these avocados in our food boxes and it's kind of like what to do with them. Um, but I do love uh, guacamole um, as a barbecue treat. It's got the healthy fats that our salmons have in it. and so really nourishing for uh, growing brains for kids and also um, healthy fats for adults. So I threw that one in there. Um, I also like to mix a bit of salsa in with it. And then I'll add the can of black beans and then the corn as well. So but I can send you that recipe. Also, one of my favorites, and I didn't, I wasn't at the office this morning, so I couldn't grab this recipe, but I can sure send it to you. And we made it at Gov last year, and it's canned salmon with a teeny bit of uh, candied or smoked fish, um, a little bit of uh, Greek yogurt, a little bit of cream cheese, and huckleberries. Uh, and of course, we didn't have access to huckleberries in. Um, March when we were doing this so we used blueberries but I know many of you have access to huckleberries so um, quite a delicious one so I can send that one to you but a great one to take to the beach it's filling uh, and also delicious and so let's just also maybe hope and pray that the salmon runs are strong and that folks get some food fish this year. Oh, we were thinking about like chips it is one of my favorite things as I've said um, 
but popcorn can be a nice alternative and a few of us here have tried this seaweed nettle and sesame um, shaker that you can put on your popcorn. So popcorn can be a great treat and an expensive treat to take to the beach and so uh, try this out if you like and the recipes here so it's got the sesame, the powdered nettle, um, powdered or crushed seaweed and uh, a bit of salt. So let me know if you like it. So we talked about a little bit about that creaminess, the dressings, and so that's what we're going to talk about here is this is the ingredient list for just ranch dressing. Um, so there's a lot in there when you know if you made a ranch dressing at home you could just use some yogurt, some herbs and spices, um, but instead it's got this massive long list. So some homemade ranch dressing, here's a, a recipe you could use at home. Uh, just to kind of make it at home and then you could uh, use it later dates or have it in the freezer. Um, just an option for yourself uh, to make a little bit of a healthier version. Here's some other uh, dre recipes for dressings. Um, a simple oil and vinegar can be great addition to any salad. I used this basic recipe the other day and then added some basil that I had growing in my garden and just blended it up in the blender and it was just amazing to have the light beautiful flavor of the basil in a salad dressing. Uh, my coworker Kim came up with this little bit of a table to help you kind of just come up with ideas to make your own salad dressing. Just being careful of the egg yolk. Um, if you're going to use egg yolk make sure you're not serving it to anyone with an immune, any immune compromised, compromised issues and also um, you can buy pasteurized eggs if you're going to use it. But just some ideas. Um, I try to have apple cider vinegar, balsamic and white, white, white vinegar in my house at all times um, and it just kind of helps when I need to make a quick dressing. And then um, I grow a lot of herbs out in my backyard. Um, but I also always have Italian seasoning, dried Italian seasoning in my house because it seems to be just a go-to. So yeah, exploring some food options. So sometimes when we think of a barbecue or picnic, we kind of think of the usual idea. So what I've really tried to do is create some visuals here of other things that you could bring. Um, so everyone's probably seen this whole mason jar, create your own salad. So I tried to find a picture where you, your family could each make their own variety from some of the options that you have and they have their own uh, container of food uh, so then it's a little bit personalized so that's an option. I, some salmon cakes or fish cakes I find can be really delicious especially if you have a nice little um, aioli or a dip to have. They can be warm or cold. I uh, like rice wraps can be a fun summer option. Also frittata. Um, can be a nice, these are just egg pies or egg muffins. I think I have a recipe for them coming up. And then I just saw this muffin or egg carton and what a nice way for kids to have a variety of snacks and ideas and they can just choose what they want to eat. But I never would have thought of using an egg carton in that way so I thought I'd share. And then I love a good burger. Um, it's probably one of my favorite things in the summer. Um, and I really liked this recipe because sometimes you can spend a lot of money on the beef um, and this one has uh, some canned or cooked lentils in it. So you're extending the beef that you have but you're also adding some good nutrition and fiber into it and you can't even tell they're in it. It's amazing. And then of course it's coming into the summer. We're going to have a ton of zucchinis around and I'm always wondering what to do with it. So they actually uh, grate some zucchini in this recipe. So let me know if you guys think that would be something you'd try, um, but it can be really delicious. Uh, yeah, and then I've been really enjoying, many of you probably have Facebook. I've been watching or enjoying some of the Tasty or Gooder videos and this one really caught my eye and it was veggie burgers done four different ways. And so sometimes just deconstructing that idea of having to have beef um, and these can be made into smaller burgers like sliders um, or they can just be used on their own and you could dip them into salsa or whatever 
putting some guacamole would be lovely on them. So just different ways of looking at it. So take a look at this video when you have time, and maybe some of you have seen it. But just veggie burgers are such a great, nutritious alternative, but also um, really inexpensive. So that's definitely something I... And if you ever have good videos that you are, like, the tasty that I might be needing to learn about, I'd love to hear as well. Yeah, I put some fish cakes on here. I mentioned those earlier. Um, you can have them as on their own or as on small mini buns, which are, I like the size of sliders. I feel like sometimes our burgers are getting so big and the buns are getting so big. So sliders can be a really healthy alternative. Um, but yeah, so you using salmon or using whatever white fish you might have. I use a lot, I don't have access to um, food fish, of course. Uh, so I use just a wild sockeye um, from Oceans and I make uh, fish cakes from that quite often. Here's the recipe for egg pie, or you could make um, the muffins, whichever you want. I make it quite often. It's a low-cost um, thing, because really sometimes all you need is some potato and um, eggs, and you're good to go. But then you can add anything you need to get rid of in the fridge, usually, and top it with a bit of cheese and call it a day. Um, but they're very versatile as well and transportable, so that was why something I thought to share with you guys. And then also mini pizzas. I use the English muffins quite often. Uh, I find they're, I toast them a little bit first and then make the pizza on them, but they taste delicious cold. That also could be something you make and then head out to the beach or the park. Um, and then your kids can create their own special ones because they can add the toppings that they want. So that was something I, I wanted to share. And there's a quick and dirty little recipe. Um, basically, everyone can just, you know, find their own personality on the food and uh, then they can feel like it's their own and they've done, especially kids, they can be feel part of the process. One of my favorite barbecue, picnic, beach things are skewers, especially because they taste delicious cold. So here's a whole variety of, uh, we've got grilled veggies on the top right with um, a bit of pineapple, which can taste delicious, or fruit and veggies. Uh, with the pineapple and the tomato or so those can be just a great way to get some more veggies in and everyone you know of course being safe those ends of those skewers can be a bit pokey but kids can help create their own um, and then we've just got any kind of beef we've got chicken satay and then beef or chicken uh, and just a, a lovely snack that is so transportable um, and you can just throw them in the cooler and eat them cold or if you want, you could bring a little barbecue to the beach and just grill them up there. But I love skewers. I've been working with an elder for many years, and his famous barbecued clams and mussels are quite delicious. And he uses a little hibachi with the, the briquettes, and he just um, grills mussels and clams. They've um, already been cooked um, and shucked, and then he just grills them. And the, the sweetness that comes out of them from the barbecue is amazing. So I can also uh, connect you with his tips on how he cooks it. He also sometimes marinates them, sometimes puts the, he just discovered the flavor shaker last month and has been using that and really enjoyed that on them when we were doing a session with the uh, youth at the tribal school. So just wanted to share that idea. And then it is key. I know that parents' time is just so hard and kids can be fussy and picky and so just trying to get them to work together with you and create some of the meals. So these are just some visuals. Of course, if you, uh, creating their own fruit skewers or I love these uh, peanut butter pinwheels with banana in the middle. Um, but they really could make their own um, little peanut butter sandwiches or pinwheels. Um, from whatever they wanted to eat, and then you roll them up, cut them up, put a toothpick in them, and then that's their little treat. And then um, meatballs or any of those kinds of foods can also be really um, nutritious. You could use the recipe from the burgers and the lentils that make some meatballs, um, have a little bit, a bit of a dip, and uh, you've got a, a kind of a kid-friendly thing. And uh, at Gov this year, we made these peanut butter apple sandwiches, 
um, or apple pizzas, depends which way. If you take the top off, it's a pizza. If you put the top on, it's a sandwich. Um, and kids just put peanut butter or almond butter if there's an allergy, and then just some coconut. We sprinkled some cinnamon, and we put a few chocolate chips or craisins or dried blueberries, kind of whatever you have, um, and that can be a really nice snack as well. But one of the, the things we know is that getting kids involved in whatever food prep uh, you have uh, will increase their likelihood of eating it and enjoying it because they felt part of the process. And then who doesn't like summer sweet treats? So I just uh, highlighted a few ideas. Of course, fruit is always great. Um, Planning your picnic, your adventure, or anything that you're doing around berry picking can be really fun. So there, I just threw some salmon berries or red huckleberries in there. I know uh, there's a lot of blackberries here, the invasive ones, but um, that can be a fun thing to get. Uh, you know, you eat one, you put one on the bucket kind of um, aspect. And then, of course, Indian ice cream can be a great thing to show kids if you have access to soap berries. Just a, it's an amazing transformation of berries into this amazing frothy deliciousness. And then some more modern ideas here is like um, strawberries or bananas dipped in chocolate. Um, can be frozen bananas and frozen strawberries because then of course they do will be um, cold and just they won't melt as fast. And then making your own popsicles. Um, here you can see someone's used some fresh fruit. I just put the container. Um, popsicle containers because really we've talked about smoothies quite a lot um, um, in some of our trainings and really you could just take a delicious smoothie recipe, blend it up, pour it into those things, stick the lids in and freeze it and you've got a healthy yummy snack for young people and yourself. Um, and So that's an option as well. So just enjoying the sweet treats of summer. Um, I'd love if anyone has other ideas of good summer desserts. Uh, I know watermelon can be a big one that people bring, or fruit plates as well. Um, but sometimes a little chocolate um, makes us all happy. Snacks as well. Sometimes you're not going out to picnic or to the park or going anywhere. You just need some snacks. Mesa jars I do find quite handy. Um, and then everyone can fill up their own mason jar with whatever they wanted to have. So here's putting some one of our healthy dips with some cut up veggies in the bottom or on top of or putting the dressing on the bottom and then the veggies cut up on top. It can be a handy snack or any fruit that you have cut up into a little mason jar or yogurt or yogurt container. And nothing beats a good old hard boiled egg. I'd probably keep the shell on during transportation um, but uh, I love a hard boiled egg for energy and then, of course, some power balls. I just made some date, cocoa powder, and coconut balls the other day I can send the recipe with. Or I always love peanut butter balls um, uh, that can just kind of help give you that quick, quick fuel. And then also, I'm a bit of a cookie monster. And this is one of my favorite recipes for kind of a power cookie. And then, of course, we know kids love to bake cookies, or they probably would love to roll the energy balls or the power balls together and so those can be things to get um, everyone connected. So that's an option for you as well. So I just tried to find this picture. I always think of we have this beautiful lake, Durant's Lake or Pea Lake or Elk or Beaver Lake in our area and you just see this or Thetis, you see the beach just take over with young people and families and folks just getting out of the norm and swimming and having a blast. And so for thinking around that for family meals, uh, just gather around simple meals, uh, things that you like. Uh, I'm just thinking about how powerful for me, sometimes when I don't want to cook, it's crackers and cheese and some cut up veggies. <laughs> uh, so it doesn't have to be fancy. I know we've talked about a lot of fancy things, but uh, you know, bringing the barbecue down and or the Coleman stove and just uh, cooking up what, what you have. Remember family meals can uh, can share any meal. It doesn't have to be dinner. It can be breakfast, a snack, lunch. Um, it just doesn't have to be these big formal dinners. So whenever you can connect and eat and sit at a table with your uh, family is the best. Um, eat what you usually eat to start. 
Um, you can work on what's served later. Allow time for meals. Make them part of your routine. It's hard in our society when um, sometimes we're just on the go and rushing. So try to find that one meal a day that just works for you and your family and your community. And then just try to turn off the screens as much as you can so that we're um, connected. So that's the acronym here, GREAT. Uh, so uh, there's just some ideas. Um, tips for fast meals, not fast foods. It is about getting the kids um, to connect to foods that they like. They can you could they, you could, they could ask you to buy the food and you could help with the shopping. They could help with the cooking. They can peel, chop, stir, or set the table or pack the cooler. So just getting them involved. You just keeping it simple. I know we've talked about a lot of cooking ideas today, but um, it can be um, broad and big. Uh, do and then potlucks. I'm a big, huge fan of using your friend network, using your family network, so that you're all just meeting together, maybe at the beach or the park or camping. But you're doing half the work because what you're all uh, cooking together. Uh, pack a picnic to eat before the practice, before games or work. So that's more for the winter time, but just thinking about um, with all the activities you're doing, how can you kind of just eat, but it doesn't have to be at a table. It could be under a tree, um, at the beach, or right at the practice pitch before your kids um, work, but you're connecting through food. Um, and then one of the biggest teachings is um, making the same meal for everyone. I know um, moms, their hearts are big, and uh, my mom cooked a different meal for my brother for most of his life until he went to his girlfriend's house at 18 and tried carrots and onions, because he had to, because he was there, and he absolutely loved um, them and wondered why he'd never eaten them. And so uh, it takes a child 15 to 20 times to see a food before they eat it, and so just setting the table and placing the food on the table and letting kids dish out their plate is uh, the recommendations that we around building food confidence for folks. So, uh, table talk. Uh, so, trying to just, we've been using uh, table talk. We, there's conversation cards that have been created, but family meals are a time for food, laughter, and present uh, pleasant conversation. Choose other times. Um, besides dinner to talk about discipline and report cards and other issues. Um, and so New Chalmeth and the public health dietitian in Port Alberni created the Let's Talk conversation cards. And I love them. I've been using them with older teens, like 13, 14, at the tribal school. Once we've sit down and we've cooked the food, um, they can each pick a card and ask. And it can be like, what's your favorite superhero? What's your favorite movie? If you could do anything or travel anywhere, where would you go? And this one is, if you could be any animal for a day, what would you be and why? Um, so I really uh, hold my hands up to this group for making these cards. I really love them. And you can see that everyone at the table gets time to talk. And uh, you get to know each other on a different level. So these can be accessed, again, at this bettertogetherbc.ca, learn resources. You can just click that. Um, so please take a look at those. So those were for kids kind of five and over, and you can judge if your four-year-old would love them. I mean, there's no timeline. But for toddlers and uh, preschoolers, Island Health created these conversation cards that have um, a bit more uh, food connecting and food learning on them, and they can also be accessed on the Better Together website. So. Uh, take a look at those. They're a little bit bigger. They're about double the size of these ones, and they're in color. And also, Kim and I all have printed copies that have a coil ring, and so if you're really interested in them, we can send you one as a sample up in the mail. And if you like it, um, you could always print them out yourself. So, But I have a whole bunch in my office, and I'd love to share. So you can take a look at those on this website and let me know what you think. <coughs> Yeah, so um, if anyone has any questions, I know Jesse's going to come in and hang out with me here. And um, yeah, I just thank you for listening and for your time. And here she is. 
Hi, everybody. So we had a, we had a couple questions come up throughout, um, and then a couple of people just moose shared, burgers. yeah, Hello. shared some cool comments. So Esther really enjoys moose burgers, and Chris also offered doing a lot of grilled veggies on the barbecue, oh, good zucchini idea. and peppers and asparagus, and we kind of chatted about wheat berries a little bit too, and just. Uh, talking about what some other uses for wheat berries are. Mm -hmm. And someone shared that they're also really good in soups and as a breakfast option. Oh, I would have never thought of using them in soup. No. Great one. Yeah. And yeah, it's like a warm cereal. What a great idea. With a little bit of cinnamon. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. I totally forgot about grilled veggies. <laughs> I love it. And moose, I would love to. I've never had moose, so I would love... Oh my god, if we could have a virtual picnic. Really <laughs> um, okay, and a couple questions that came in. So somebody asked, what is the benefit of the emulsifiers in salad dressing? Yeah, I think the emulsifiers are, give it that creamy look. And so if you like a creamy salad dressing, that might be um, why you'd want the emulsifier. And then it, do you know how when you make a salad dressing, it separates? And so that helps keep it all mixed together as well. So, yeah. Okay, and then also we were wondering oh, if it's safe wow. to put meat and veggies on the same skewers. Yeah, that's a really good question. I just always have done that. But I wonder what the food safety people would say. Um, I would imagine because it's cooking through, right? So it's Yeah, I think the key is making sure you're cooking your meat. You know, you don't want uh, red or undercooked chicken because then the juices would be on the veggies but the heat of a barbecue would be hot enough to kill anything so I guess it's fully cooking everything yeah. and then um, making sure your liquids from your meat are running clear okay that's such a good question too yeah I don't know. okay I'm just gonna see if some other ones came in it's uh, Esther saying the only meat she eats is moose except for fish and pork yeah. Moose is the new beef. <laughs> I think she's right. I love it. Yeah. And I've just, I've taken down a couple recipes that we'll send everybody. The huckleberry dip, the black bean dip, uh, maybe the wheat berries salad, just because I think that's kind of new and interesting. And the date cocoa and coconut balls. Yeah. And I was just thinking, I never mentioned couscous. I eat a whole bunch of whole wheat couscous mm. and uh, I'm just about to go on the west coast trail and that's actually a lot of the grain that I'm eating because all you have to do is pour hot water in and let it sit for five minutes maybe ten minutes and your dinner's ready so if you don't you know wild rice uh, wheat berries quinoa all take 20 minutes to cook where whole wheat couscous only takes five mm. so if you're needing a quick and dirty uh, couscous can be a really nice grain it's not as healthy as you know, the, the wheat berries, the uh, quinoa, lentils, or wild rice have a ton of fiber. Mm -hmm. But if you were making a couscous salad but adding a bit of chickpeas or black beans or something to it, you'd get that magic power of fiber in there. Yeah. Great. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. If anyone has any other questions for us, you can um, still put them up in the chat box there and we can address them. Otherwise, thanks, everybody, so much for attending. This was our first webinar. Oh, we've got something here. Oh. Esther's just saying that she's been learning about the magic powers of stinging nettle and how it's good as tea, that she adds some beautiful mint and rose petals and chamomile, and then mm. the rose hips or buds to it. That chamomile. sounds amazing. And imagine how nice, Esther, that would be. Make it and then ice it. And so then you can drink it during this season. So that's what I'm doing right now is drinking iced medicine tea. So um, that can be a really nice way. I didn't really mention that uh, when we were talking about the ice drinks. Oh, and uh, that's such a good question. Uh, she's asking about the powdered nettle, and I knew I should have elaborated on that a little bit. So I do have a little nettle patch in my backyard, so I'll harvest the nettle. I'll dry it. Um, and so then it's then I'll take it off the stem after two weeks when it's really dry and then I sometimes will put it in my blender 
Um, but then the key to get a powder is a silly little coffee grinder. If you have mm -hmm. a little coffee grinder or a mortar and pestle, like those things that you crush herbs with, either of those will powder the nettle down enough that it will be a delicious shaker to add medicine to your food. So, yes. yeah. I have a coffee grinder I use just for herbs. Yeah. 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 And I bought one the other day at Canadian Tire, of course. I live in the city um, for 12 bucks. Nice. So, that. Uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, Esther again is saying she never thought of icing it, um, but that is such a great way to, I find in the wintertime I drink so much like lemon and ginger, or I'll drink lots of medicine teas, um, or just nettle mint tea all the time, I'm trying to think of what some of my, see it's like I've lost it because mm -hmm. I'm not drinking those um, as much, like I wouldn't even leave the house without my little thermos, but now it's like what I'll do is I'll take so yesterday, or Monday, I took five big mason jars and I scooped, um, I think I, I, yeah, just a, whatever tea I was making. And so I made five of them with hot water, let them sit for a couple hours, and then they're all in the fridge now. And so I can just grab one and run out of the house. Mm -hmm. So I do it in a big bulk, and that should be okay for about, like, five days in the fridge. Hopefully I've drank them all by Friday. <laughs> That convenience factor is key, though. Yeah, because if you had to make ready. that every day, it's like, no. Yeah. Same with, like, the smoothies, making that big, big pot of smoothies and then pouring them into the popsicle trays so that you have them. Or you could even, if you don't have the popsicle trays, you could just do it in little ice, ice cube yeah. trays. Yeah, I'm learning. And uh, just that idea of family meals, I'd love to hear what you guys think and if the family meals cards conversation cards or anything that you would use so yeah well that's great thank you so much Fiona for being here for our first webinar and thank you everybody for joining um, if you have any other questions following up for myself or Fiona just please feel free to email either of us and we've recorded this session so we're going to make it available if you want to share with any coworkers or uh, or anyone else in your community Great. Have a great summer. Enjoy the... Go for a swim. <laughs> it's my favorite thing. <laughs> Bye, everyone.